video, we're just going to review systems of equations so far. So I've got this system, x plus 2y equals 3, and 4x plus y equals 6, and I want to solve it first by graphing. Alright, so whenever we solve by graphing, we're going to take both of our equations and put them in slope-intercept form. Alright, remember slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So if I start with the first one, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract that x over. I want to try and get y by itself. So I've got 2y equals negative x plus 3. Divide everything by 2. And I've got y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 half, which is 1.5. Alright, so when I come to my graph, I'm going to go to positive 3 halves, positive 1.5, and put my dot. And then my slope from there is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 over 2. Go down one over two, and for whatever my first equation is, I'm going to go all the way left to right on my graph. Make sure I get all of my points, maybe, get all of my points all the way across. That way when I do my other graph, my other line, it'll be easy to see where it intersects. And that was ugly, so let's try that again. That was a little better. So there's the one line. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing for the other one. So I'm going to move the x over. And now these lines aren't exactly easy to graph, but it's still doable. All right, we're still going to find our solution where they intersect. All right, negative 4x plus 6, and we're going to divide by 5. So we get y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 6 over 5. Now 6 over 5 is my y-intercept, and that's going to be 1 to 5th, just over 1. Right, so I'm going to come up here, right about there. Oops. And I know that my slope is negative 4 fifths, so I can go down 4 over 5, and up 4 over 5, or left 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4... Two, three, four, five, and attempt to connect these lines. Ooh, not even close. So we'll go down maybe like so. And there's my attempt. <laughs> and the intersection is right here at negative one, two. Now, obviously, you would not have a question that was this complicated on your test, but it's still, you got to be able to graph anything. So we graphed our line, found our solution that was at negative 1, 2. Now I'm going to take that same system, and I'm going to solve it using substitution. So remember, to substitution, you're going to solve for one variable, and then substitute that in to the other equation. When you're looking for a variable to solve for, look for a coefficient of 1. You won't always have 1. But if you have a coefficient of 1, you can avoid fractions. All right, so for this first equation, I have a coefficient of a 1 right there with the x. So that's the variable I'm going to get by itself. I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 2y. So I get x equals negative 2y plus 3. Now I'm going to take what I know x is and plug it into x in the other equation because my solution is where the x and the y's are the same. So then my new equation becomes 4 times negative 2y plus 3 plus 5y equals 6. Now I only have y in my equation, so I can solve for y. I can figure out what y has to be. So I'm going to start by distributing 4. So we get negative 8y plus 12 plus 5y equals 6. I got my like terms, negative 8y and 5y give me negative 3y. Subtract the 12 over, so we get negative 3y equals negative 6, and divide by negative 3, so y equals positive 2. Once I know the 2, I can take that and plug it back in to the y up here to figure out what x is. So I've got negative 2 times 2 plus 3, so that's negative 4 plus 3, and that's negative 1. So my answer is negative 1, 2, which is what we found when we graphed.
Now I'm going to take that same system and solve it with elimination. So elimination, the goal is to completely eliminate one variable, and eventually we're going to add these. So I've got to get one of my variables to cancel out. All right, so if I look at the 1, cancel out of 1 would be a negative 1. A 2 would be, uh oh, lost my mouse. A 2 would be a negative 2. And I got a 5, so those don't cancel right now. 4 would need a negative 4. 5 would need a negative 5. So nothing right now cancels, but I can easily take 1 and get 4. All right? So I'm going to get my x's to cancel. Now remember, you have to have 1 positive, 1 negative. So I need to multiply by 4, but then to get it negative, i got to put a negative out front. So I'm going to multiply by negative 4. Whatever I do to 1, I have to do to everything. So I'm going to multiply that negative 4 by this entire equation. So I'm going to get negative 4x minus 8y equals negative 12, and then bring over that same bottom equation, 4x plus 5y equals 6. Once I have a variable to cancel, I just add my two equations. The x's go away. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. Divide by negative 3. So y equals positive 2. Then pick one of my equations to plug back into. So I've got x plus 2 times 2 has to equal 3. x plus 4 equals 3. Subtract 4. x equals negative 1. So my answer again is negative 1, 2. So those are the three ways of solving. Okay, the other thing we looked at so far is an inequality, a system of inequalities. Okay, we're not really solving this one to get a value because an inequality has multiple solutions. We're shading on our graph to see where our shading goes. All right, so if we think back, um, this bottom equation ended up being negative 4 fifths x plus 6 over 5. All right, and the top one was y greater than negative 1 half x plus 3 halves. Okay, so we already put these in step-intercept form a long time ago when we did our graphing. Okay, so it's the same exact equations, but now instead of an equal sign, I've got a greater than and a less than or equal to. So if I graph the first, I'm going to go to 3 halves, which is 1.5, maybe, and I'm going to go down 1 over 2 all the way across, like we did in that first one. The difference here is that now it's just greater than, so I'm going to have to use a dotted line, maybe, if I can get any of these to graph. Alright, so instead of a solid line, I'm going to attempt to do a dotted line. All the way across, almost got all of them. And I've got to decide where I'm going to shade. You can decide where you're going to shade by plugging in 0 for x and y. Plug in 0, 0. If I plug in 0, 0, everything that's touching a variable goes away, and I'm left with 0 greater than 3 halves. 0 is not bigger than 1.5, so 0, 0 is not a solution. 0, 0 is below my graph, which means I'm going to shade above my graph. Do the same thing for this one. They change the color back. So I go to 1 and a fifth, put my dot, then I'm going to go down 4 over 5, and up 4, left 5. This one is or equal to, so that means I'm going to have a solid line to connect all of these. Maybe. I'm going to plug in 0, 0. Everything touching x and y goes away, so I'm left with 0 less than or equal to 6 fifths. In this case, 0 is smaller than 1 and 1 fifth, so it is a solution, so I'm going to shade on the same side. I'm going to shade going down this way. So now my solution area is way up here, this little sliver where they overlap. And that's the solution to the inequality. So it's got infinite solutions within that yellow region.